So there are a lot of reasons why uh, you don't want to go a different route than the Tahoe Overlanding Track Bar Builders Kit for your Tahoe Overlanding Axle Swamp. And it's going to be a long video, but I'll give you sort of a preview right now on the things we're going to touch on. We're going to touch on why you can't mount the track bar on top of the axle. So you, we'll touch on why you can't move the mounting up there. We'll touch on why you can't have a straight track bar. We'll touch on why you must have the shape of track bar. We will touch on why you don't want to make your track bar out of tubing. We will touch on why you can't run a different track bar bracket than the Tahoe Overlanding track bar bracket. And we will touch on why you can't move the track bar mounting forward or backward on the frame rail to avoid needing this shape of a track bar bracket. Stay tuned. So, right here, this is the track bar. Some people call it a pan hard bar, pan hard bar, or a track bar. You're going to find those words get used interchangeably in the industry. Traditionally, a pan hard bar is usually referring to one on the rear axle, but again, people use them both ways. So, when you hear me say track bar, I'm referring to the lateral length, which is another word that describes the same item. What it does is it locates the axle side to side. That's why it's on this plane, side to side. But it's not just there to locate the axle side to side. It's important that the track bar keeps the axle the same distance from the steering box at all phases of suspension travel to avoid bump steer. That's why the length of the track bar should not vary widely from the length of the drag link. And that's why the angle of the track bar should also not vary widely from the angle of the drag link. Now it's nearly impossible to get them to match perfectly, uh, but you want them as close as you can get them to avoid bump steer. Bump steer is when you hit a bump or the suspension is compressed, the axle moves one way, and then as the suspension unloads it moves the other way. So that can result in all kinds of problems if you don't have correct track bar geometry. Hitting a bump on the freeway, for example, could result in, you know, a tank slapper. Kind of a death wobble situation because the suspension was down and it's doing this now. And it just makes itself worse and worse and worse and worse because now it's causing itself to keep happening. So you'll find that you're never going to get them perfect. Okay? Never. The track bar that we use matches closely the length and geometry of the Dodge track bar. The Dodge track bar is cast, but it's one solid piece. That's important because you're going to find making a track bar with multiple bends in it out of tubing will fail. Um, in fact, the only company I know of that is even offering one for customer use out of tubing still is this company here, and theirs is made out of chromoly. And that chromoly tubing is having problems. If you just Google it, people are having their track bar snap. So that's one reason why you may want to move away from having a tubular track bar if you're gonna put bends in it. And that's why we offer the ultra heavy duty solid track bar builders kit. Starts out like this, comes to you just like this. It's a builder's blank. That is solid 1018 cold rolled steel. Fully weldable, machinable, drillable, cuttable. You can weld this. Cast, you can't. So next up, you might be thinking, oh, well, it doesn't have to have those bends. There's ways of doing it if you make the track bar straight. Okay, let's talk about that. This is a cast sleeve all the way to here. Which means if you're going to try to weld anything, it's going to be right here. But we know based on where the bump stops hit, this is where the frame is. So even if you tried to weld something here, it will be that side of the frame. So at full bump, you're gonna be having, you're gonna have frame in your way, therefore it's not gonna help you either. You, you can't weld a track bar bracket up here. You're gonna have to weld it here somewhere, somewhere below the top of the axle tube. But that's the same situation as here. You need it to have a bend to clear the differential housing, otherwise you'll sacrifice 
tons of upward travel. Okay, so let's just maybe, you know, put this into practical um, terms. The axle is hooked all the way up onto the bump stops. In fact, it could actually go up higher than this if I wasn't running this particular uh, knuckle over um, one ton style steering, you know, Chevy one ton, whatever. I shouldn't have done that on this truck and I don't do this ever again, but that is what actually stops me from getting an additional um, probably three quarters of an inch of upward travel. But um, even at this lower maximum upward travel, let's just take a look at what uh, difference that makes uh, as far as you know, what the track bar can be. Okay, so that's on the bump stop. In fact, yeah, it's pretty much on the bump stop. You can see what you're looking at here. Fully tucked axle. Right here, you got automatic transmission lines. So you can get a good view. Wire harness. Oil pan. And then differential housing. And what I want you to note is the differential housing is higher than the bottom of the oil pan. With the top of the differential housing being higher than the oil pan, that means there is literally no way that you can have a track bar that is mounted on top of the axle make its way to the driver's side frame rail and be straight. So you can see that you at the very least have to have the track bar be that shape some version of it because even if you were to attach it on top of the axle here it still needs to traverse this way now there's reasons why you wouldn't want to attach it at the top of the axle there so maybe with it just like this you can see how you have very little ability to do a different track bar setup and achieve anywhere near this much upward travel. Now let's just take a look at how much upward travel it would take to be able to use a uh, track bar that is straight. Let's see how much we can lose before it will work. Okay, I'm gonna say that, I'm gonna use a tape measure because it's straight and it's about as narrow as you can get away with. And we'll run it clear to there. Okay. We already know that the top overlanding track bar bracket is as far as you can get. Okay. So let's and let's say you manage to weld right here next to the coil mount for your track bar bracket. Let's say that's where you put it. Okay. That appears to be line of sight wise using a tape measure that's actually only an inch wide. You're going to use thicker metal than that. Line of sight that's barely clearing the axle housing at that point. Okay? I had to drop the axle two and a half inches to get the axle in a configuration where the track bar could possibly be straight. And that's where the axle would have to stop moving. Um, basically, two and a half inches of height means that your center of gravity is not raised two and a half inches, except basically you're gonna need bigger tires. You're gonna need a bigger tire to also make up for the taller height. You don't want it to look like a skipped leg day. So basically, um, in order to be proportional, you're going to need two and a half inches higher height than this to have the exact same suspension travel, and then another two and a half inches of height in tire, meaning that you are going to gain five inches of height, and that means five inches of center of gravity raised. Five out of and five is basically about fifteen percent from when we measured. Go to my center of gravity measurement on this video here. That's raising your center of gravity by 15% to have 
no more additional travel, to have a massive loss in upward travel, all to just try to have a straight track bar. Now, even if you wanted to have a 40 inch tire and be five inches taller, if you ran track bar shaped like this, you're gonna be able to have even more upward travel. But you do run into another issue, and that is that the higher you are, the further down this gets, your steering starts run, running into binding issues, no matter what steering you use. I'll tell you, I can already see the people getting ready to type. I'm gonna run Heim steering. Heim steering also has limits. Heim's can't actually pivot much more than tie rods, but even Heim's have limits. So at whatever point you get to, your steering is going to uh, run out of uh, the ability to cycle without binding. Now, with your straight track bar to here, you're gonna need to make your steering match that angle, which means you're gonna need a drop pit in arm. Way dropped, because that's gonna be a fairly horizontal track bar. You need a way drop pit in arm. That's gonna be hanging way down here to hit stuff. You're gonna lose approach clearance because you're gonna need a drop pit in arm to make your steering not bind and to make the angles as close as you can try to get them. Because if you have widely varying angles and length of your drag link and track bar, you're gonna have massive bump steer issues. Things gonna suck to drive. There's no point doing that. So what we have right here is the axle out of it. And you can see that you don't have much room. Look at that. So, let's go around this side and you can see, you don't have a lot of room here. And the track bar bracket here can't be any further this way because it hits the axle housing and it can't be any further that way because it hits the uh, coil spring mount. And the reason why the Tahoe Overlanding track bar bracket is so special and crucial is that it moves the bolt as far outboard as possible to get the clearance you need while still attaching to the inside of the frame. So you can't run an outboard uh, mounting fr of the frame for your track bar bracket because the coil springs right here. And all of the aftermarket track bar brackets that are on the uh, available mount here and they put the mounting somewhere over here and that'll interfere with the differential housing. Like I said, just come over here and take a look at this. So I've got another one of our brackets mounted here. Take a look. So that's the edge of the frame. And it's, oh, there you go. And it goes straight down to the edge of the frame. Just eyeball it. See, I'll drop it square down, that square is falling on the edge of the frame on the bracket. Look. Just where you'll end up mounting your track bar is going to be all into this meaty part of the differential. So you can't run one of those brackets either. As you can see, this if it were straight, it'd be into your diff here. And you can see that you're not gonna be able to move the track bar mounting forward of axle center line to avoid the diff with a straight track bar because your steering's in the way. And obviously you can't move that bracket backward from axle center line because that's just gonna put it even more interfering with the actual differential housing. So what I'm trying to say with this video is that Tahoe Overlanding has already done the research and development and figured out what works and we provide the most ultimately heavy duty option for you in the form of the ultra heavy duty track bar builders blanks. And that allows you to have the strongest option that performs the best. Now I understand that you're able to fabricate things. You can do whatever you want, but you'll find that for the most part, it's gonna come at a cost of available upward suspension travel. Upward suspension travel is crucial because that's what determines your center of gravity. Because you have to have adequate upward travel from ride height to, um, have any kind of performance off-road 
And so that's you know, the alternative being taking this axle and just riding it on the bump stops at ride height. Sure, your center of gravity might be a little lower, but you have no upward travel. So what I'm trying to say is that um, you basically can just save all the time and effort and heartache just going with the kit that we offer in the fabrication parts bundle that comes with all the stuff you need to put it on and it'll just work. Just look at uh, this customer here. You see there, uh, he says, don't make the mistake he made. You should just go along with getting the top overlying track bar and bracket. So in this picture here, he's got three tubular track bar iterations that he's tried with an aftermarket track bar bracket and it just didn't work. Not shown in the pictures is what he has now, which is a ultra heavy duty solid Tahoe overlanding track bar and the Tahoe overlanding track bar bracket. You had to cut off all those welds and all that and go with a Tahoe overlanding track bar bracket. Or this customer here, he did go with our track bar, but then decided to go with an aftermarket track bar bracket. Uh, I think he went with the Barnes uh, four wheel drive track bar bracket. And through various test fitment and uh, iterations, he realized he had to cut it up and redrill it and re uh, refabricate it to make well even he you know calls it a you know rip off of our bracket because that was the only way it was going to work so just trust that we've got this figured out and it works and it will be a much better end product for you when it comes to time money and performance thanks for watching